I am at the Bamburi Cement Halapak. This place was converted and restored from being a quarry. Now it is a wild animal center. We have crocodiles, reptiles, and giraffes, and even water bugs. This place has motivated me to contemplate on the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On the book of Luke chapter 16, beginning to read from verse 1 to 8 or 10. This is the story of the shrewd manager. What I'm really amazed is that the people of this world, the corporations and the companies, were able to exploit this otherwise redundant place and made it to be an income generating activities that generate millions of money. I want to say the story of the shrewd manager is one of the parables of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The shrewd manager was very incompetent and his manager had to suck him because of incompetence. But before he was being disturbed, he decided to act shrewdly and he called the people who owed debt to his manager and said, how much did you owe? How? How? And when they gave the figure, he changed the figure. And later the manager commended him for acting, acting shrewdly. And Jesus said, which is the gist of this text, that the children of darkness act more shrewdly than the children of light. This is a parable that was directed to the children of light, and it does not support dishonesty. Rather, it talks about the shrewdness, the shrewdness of the people of this world and lessons that we can glean as Christians. They are pertinent lessons that I endeavor as a teacher of theology of development to teach and to impart it in the church. Number one, the shrewd manager acted prudently and acted timely. That is in sharp contrast to the church. The church is always bogged down with bureaucracy, always in synods, always in PCCs. I remember one of our synods long time ago where the major mantra was let's avoid the vicious cycle. We normally meet, we procrastinate, we make decisions, never implement. But this shrewd manager act, acted promptly. This is what the church should learn. That whatever decision they have to make, they should do it promptly, in time. Number two, he did not only act promptly, he also acted prudently. There is a challenge in the charge of utilization of resources. Sometimes blind loyalty is more important than competence. And sometimes resources have not been utilized to their full potential. Be they land resources, be they human resources. And sometimes you will find square holes in round pegs. People who are completely not having the skill sets at a particular place, they are placed right there. And it is my cry that we must act prudently, utilize the resources. Number three, this man knew that time is of essence. In the church sometimes things are grind slowly and time, the reality of time as essence has not been adequately captured. Let's act prudently. Time is of essence. There are places where if we could have acted with time, we could have done more. Lastly, this shrewd manager, the one that we are reading in, the Bible, the shrewd manager, the one that we are reading in the Bible, especially at this particular text, we learn 
that this shrewd manager acted with the future in mind. Most of our church projects, the future is not the mind, is not in mind as people act and manage it. What they think is what is expedient for now. We do not invest for the future. What do I benefit from it now? Therefore, I challenge churchmen, church leaders, let's learn from the parable of the shrewd manager. Let us always act promptly in time. Let us act prudently. Let's act with the future in progress. You may get positions you may not get. Do not procrastinate. Do not keep on blaming people. Act prudently. Read the situations of the time. And as we do that, the church will be able to replenish its resources and it will be able to meet its needs. And we are going to do sustainable development in the church. A development that encompasses uh, uh, environment, a resources that encompasses stewardship of the resources that we have, and let's act prudently. May the Lord bless you as you serve in the church and as we act prudently with the resources that God has given us. And may the Lord bless these people who talked about this alapa. May the Lord bless my family that enabled me to be here. May the Lord bless friends like Saidi who enabled us to be here. May the Lord bless the people who directed us. May the Lord bless all the Christians that we have served in various parishes and even the latest St. Paul's Theological College and St. Barnabas Soimene. May the Lord richly bless our families in Plateau, in Nairobi, in Mount Elgon. And may the blessings of God be with you now and forever. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.